All right, let's go feed the birds. Whoa. That's the bottom line. Not elephants, not rhinos, not colobus monkeys is the crowned eagle. here with Simon Tomzet, who is one of the, the leading experts of raptors in Africa, if not the world. Keep watching to learn more about this amazing man in his amazing home. Well, the idea was, um, is that this would be a sort of a focal point with a number of birds of prey. People coming to Soy Sambu would be able to see the wild birds of prey. Um, I'd really wanted to have a whole load of students that would be able to do directed research. And I came along here and started to build with the resources at hand, which are mud and rocks. So it's all made out of mud and rocks. The mud around here I got out of a buffalo wallow because that's sort of all been manured up and ploughed. We're up in Simon's treehouse, one of the really cool spots you can come and stay if you're staying with him, doing some bird research. Toilet with a view. It's a very honest little campsite. I've had some people, completely fresh tourists, come here and just think it's fantastic. Um, a treehouse up there, you can get to see literally lions underneath you. I've had giraffe wander by and, and look at you in your bed at sort of face level. <laughs> and uh, I'm not, uh, you know, making it into the cuisine. It's um, not all that great because I do the cooking, but it's basically hydroponics. Here we have a bucket. And it's full of like dick dick poo water. And then it gets pumped up through this little water pump here into that recycled water jug. And then it trickles down from that, giving me my fresh basil. My, I think it's going to be a cauliflower. Um, my tomatoes grow here like you can't believe. And uh, everything I need, lots of spinach. Around the back, they've got masses of spinach. Look, tons of spinach down here. And over there, there's a whole bunch of poppies. Some heroin for when you get bored. No wrong kind of poppies. These are perfectly good English poppies. If you're, if you're really worried about unwanted visitors in the night or the day, any of those sneaky lions or cobras, Simon's going to equip you with one of these. Little catapult. Anyway, this is how to use them. Take a little rock. How did you get into birding? Uh, when I was six, there was a temporary warden of the Serengeti staying with us. And um, he had a lana falcon. And it was brought to him as a rehab bird from the museums. And uh, I was obviously far too young in order to do anything with it. I just stood around awestruck by this amazing falcon. Yeah. And then later when I was nine, I had my first birds, uh, which were kites that had been caught on the playing fields of schools and in around Nairobi where kids had gone and actually <laughs> pulled out their feathers or even broken their, their wings. So I ended up with a whole load of broken kites. Not easy birds to handle, some of the most difficult. Now, around about the same time, I also had an auger buzz that got brought in as well. So you were the, the school doctor for birds? That's yes, yeah. and every time at break, I used to run outside with my sandwiches and throw them in the air for the hawks. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. 
This is a barn owl with a funny wing and it's not broken, not dislocated, not really been able to understand exactly what is wrong with it. And um, so this is a, a very easy way to wrap up a, a bad wing. It's non-invasive. Um, hey, you're Ooh. biting your own wing, silly bird. Hey, yeah. I don't think it's in any ways painful. It uses a wing to flap around quite a lot. So that's going tucking in underneath the armpit, tucking the humerus in. And the good thing about this vet rat is that although it's very sticky to itself, it's not sticky to the bird. Hey, you naughty thing. And, um, so I got no idea. It was found by a very small girl who was on the telephone asking me, come quickly, come quickly, because some some adults were trying to kill it and it was down a hole and um, she made a very brave effort which is so good to see because so many people hate owls they think they're a bad omen of course they're not and you can see he's trying to bite me for all he's worth and it's not painful they're completely harmless so yeah from nine having rehab birds it's very important that it was rehab birds. It wasn't birds I really wanted to have. I just felt an obligation that you couldn't turn your back on a bird with a broken wing or in some kind of a problem. And over the years I've had about 3,000 of them being brought in. Um, and it sort of opened up horizons for me. Obviously, huge responsibility as well. Um, you ended up sometimes with 50, 60, even at one point close to 100 birds of prey all being dependent upon you. The responsibility is, is, is enormous, it means you can't really break away from it, which accounts for having a rather disastrous personal life and a, a career which I was unable to go to school and, um, you know, being really sort of stuck in a mud hut ever since I was a child. But, you know, one thing's for sure, I learned a huge amount um, and what I've learned is very practical and hands-on. Does much prefer mature than me. Uh, I'm very upset about that. and. Uh, <laughs> She likes going off into the forest with Mutua. Jina ni Mutua. Napenda ndege sana. Na furai kukua na ye sana. Mini has a broken wing. I don't think we, we can release Mini um, because the wing is not ready recovered. This is Mini's wing and you can see that there's the bone completely exposed. All the uh, flesh is completely cut back. There's a metal pin going in there and all this is her blood. So she's very lucky to have kept her wing. She flies, but she doesn't fly well enough for release. So what I would like is every single raptor biologist actually train a bird. Every single person who does raptor rehabilitation should train a bird. Um, once you've trained a bird and know how, how difficult it is for it to go and actually catch something, then there would be very few rehabbers who would even think about letting go of their birds. So that's brought me to frustration. There's sort of three, three fields there. Rehabilitation. Um, 
major problem there because so many people seem to think it's easily done. You just keep a bird in captivity, wait till it grows up and, lets it, and let it go. And the other thing is uh, the academic world too, whereby all this academic stuff, all the studies, are supposed to lead to something. Oh yes, conservation, right. Okay, tell me what you're going to do in the way of conservation. It's this huge focus on megafauna that's really swamped everything. You see helicopters and aeroplanes and good-looking people jumping in and out of white cars with insignias on the side, big land cruisers tearing yeah. around, all to look after elephants, rhinos, lions, tigers and whatnot. Um, meanwhile, our indication of a good habitat, which would be a bird of prey, is declining. Anyway, who's was a beautiful girl. Such a beautiful girl. Yes, you are. She's suspicious about the camera. She's suspicious about everything. Go on. Go on. Go on. Silly girl. Yes.